Okay, Susan Rice, do you have confidence that all votes will be counted fairly in the 2020 election? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what I have confidence in. I don't. I, first of all, the, the, the key thing is whether people get to vote and whether their opportunity, once they have voted, is respected. So we don't want another re reprise of what happened in Georgia, for example. But if the issue is whether interference from foreigners can manipulate the vote tally, that's a lot harder than some people might think. Yeah. And that's because our electoral systems in the states are, are distinct from one another, they're not hooked up to the internet, and they've actually been reinforced. So in terms of foreign interference, I have some degree of confidence. In terms of what state election authorities might do to try to disenfranchise certain segments of the population, that I have more concern about. What, what do you think? What does everybody think about the bet I was making with him? Well, is it legit? Do you think? Yeah, if he would take my, if he would, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd happily give my last penny. To have <laughs> but I mean, I've been, you know, I've been saying for a very long time now that I don't think he's leaving. He did. I mean, he wasn't going to leave the first time. It was all about it's rigged. He could lose by a landslide in 2020, and I still think he would say it's rigged, fake news, deep state. I just don't think you're going to get him out of there. But, Bill, if he left doing? office, what would you talk about in your monologue? Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. What did I talk about the 23 years I was on TV before he came oh, along, know. Mr. Sciences? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson. What do you think about M M Mike Mulvaney proclaiming that they will not discuss climate change at the G7 summit? Yeah. Uh, I, well, climate change should be discussed at any possible opportunity. You are gathering people in power. And to, to deny what is an objectively true fact about what scientists have recovered in the world is to delay what might otherwise be sensibly argued political decisions about how to address the problem. Right. But as long as you keep suppressing it, uh, that is a recipe for the end of civilization as we know it. Okay. Can I just say one thing about the yeah. G7? Have a good weekend. I've, <laughs> I've, run, I've been part of a few G7 summits, uh -huh. and I know the, the host country sets the agenda, right. but the other countries get a say. And what I expect is going to happen is Donald Trump may not want to have a formal session on climate change, but it will be on the agenda because the other countries well, are going to insist. And the irony here is that I mean, but, Doral is in right, right outside Miami, and it's going to be underwater in like 50 years because of climate change, and they're just not going to discuss it. 50? Yeah, if you melt Antarctica, oh, maybe, maybe sooner. I, I don't think it's 50. In the limiting case where all of Antarctica and Greenland melt, yeah. then the sea levels will rise to the level of the Statue of Liberty's left elbow. Right. That's up so, and that's the end of Planet of the Apes. And uh, yeah, right? isn't that the yeah, end? Yeah, yeah. You just you damn. You yeah. blew it up, yeah, you, you damn stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this, I get I get chills when you do your your, your Charlton Heston. Um, okay, Sir Thomas Chatterton Williams. <laughs> By the way, I heard Downton, I like I heard Downton Abbey is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> can you explain why you believe Americans must unlearn race in order to transcend racism? Sure, because uh, racism... It's a lot about what your book is about. Yes, racism creates race, not the other way around. So I think that you have to be able to do two things. You have to fight the racism that exists in the society that we have, and you have to also keep an eye on imagining a better society that we want to have. I don't think you can get a better future that you can't first imagine. So I don't think it's enough to be anti-racist. I think that you also have to be anti-race if this is not a biological reality, which, which, which I, I want to know. I mean, I don't think Neil would agree that it's a biological reality, right? What, Science I can doesn't... Tell, what I can tell you is that when I'm asked what race I am, I say I'm the human race. Mm -hmm. And when you recognize <laughs> that any two people in the world actually have a common ancestor not very far back right. in the tree of life, that to sit here and tribalize by whatever possible little difference we can find among ourselves, rather than seeing what we actually have in common, is an abomination of civilization. Yeah. Yeah. It, just, it just points to the fact that 
We are really still a very young species. Yes. We, we uh, are at the infancy, really. It's I mean, embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Aliens will it, come down and say, you. what the hell is going on? Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. I also think in 100 years, doctors will look at what we are doing today the way we look at the way they treated George Washington and Henry VIII. They'll be like, really? You put wood in his mouth? You know, <laughs> oh, oh, he had an infection, did he? And you put dirt in it. That was great. <laughs> there are things we're doing right now. They'll be like, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> Okay, Sam Stein, what do you think of Shepard Smith leaving Fox News? Well, look, everything happens for a reason. (laughs) (laughs) I've been been waiting to use that one. I was hoping to do it. That was was very Uh, good. You know, first of all, I love Shep. Shep is great. Uh, And probably one of the most talented, if not the most talented current. (laughs) Uh, live news broadcasters in the business. And his departure from Fox News, I don't know, I mean, we can all speculate what the backstory is, I think it's pretty obvious, but it's just a real loss for the industry. I mean, it is important, if not vital, to have voices like that on Fox News. I I think it's critical. And the absence of that voice, I think, is going to cause some real damage to our news ecosystem, and I'm, I'm sad about it, honestly. Danielle, is Hillary Clinton right in suggesting that Russia is grooming Tulsi Gabbard to be a third-party candidate? I, I couldn't believe she said that. It, well, it, tell it, us it, what she said. Well, she said... Hillary. She said uh, Hillary Clinton said that Why Tulsi Gabbard, saying? who is a... <laughs> that I can't I thought answer. she was in the woods. So, Hillary Clinton <laughs> said... <laughs> not touching that either. Um, <laughs> Hillary Clinton said that Tulsi Gabbard, who's one of the Democratic candidates sure. for president, uh, yeah. uh, is, uh, is, uh, is the best candidate for, for Russia and is the candidate that well, Russia is She's not is the first to accuse Tulsi Gabbard of that, well, that she's a Russian asset of some kind. She's the first very prominent person yes, to you're accuse right. her of you're that. Yes, you're right. And then said that, it, and then said that that if uh, that she wasn't sure that the Russians would let go of Jill Stein, Jill Stein, and right. give Tulsi Gabbard that crown, it was a. I, I don't know what the rest of you thought. I thought it was a very strange thing. Oh, it's, it was say. inappropriate. Honestly, you, she. What is she basing it on? I mean, obviously, there's yeah. anecdotal stuff that she can point to, but there's no act, unless she has some information that she's not divulging. I don't think it's really fair to. No, I mean, but did you see Tulsi Gabbard's? I saw the response. That was a little bit crazy too. She she (laughs) said it's a race that the Democratic primary is now a race between her Her and and Hillary Hillary. Clinton. Yeah, and she did nothing to disavow her (laughs) embrace of Russia. You mean she should have said, "I'm not a Russian (laughs) agent." I mean, seriously. Tulsi Gabbard's comments and actions are questionable. Tulsi Gabbard is unconscionable, as, as far as I'm concerned. Are you kidding? She went and propagandized for Bashar al-Assad. Yeah. I, she's uh, unconscionable. Your guy's but... a traitor. <laughs> he's not my guy. I But, I mean, like, he sides with countries that he are not us. He actually is a Russian asset. Yeah, he actually is a Russian he actually asset. Is a Russian. He does, he Don't fucking has like meetings that. with Putin and no one's allowed in the room. He does. Nonetheless. We're talking about Tulsi Gabbard. (laughs) We're talking about Tulsi Gabbard. I'm not here to defend Donald Trump. Are you defending Tulsi Gabbard? No, I'm not defending her either. No, she's attacking her. No, I'm attacking her, like Hillary. So I guess that's what we have in common. I thought it was weird and inappropriate. Looks like we're all coming together. (laughs) Thank you very much, everybody. That was a beautiful moment.